Yo, what is up guys, it's me, it's me, it's NLG here and today we are here with the introduction of my Football Manager debut series, it's FM 2020, the full game drops tomorrow, the beta is out at the moment for one more day before it becomes a full release, so we're gonna do a little introduction, there's me when I was 13 dressed up as Tony the Tiger, oh on our cutie. But basically, what this episode's going to be, it's going to be showing you around the club and basically giving the timeline of events that tell the story. So if you want what is probably a 45 year long introduction episode, then this is the video for you. If you want to watch the first game, then just subscribe and come back tomorrow, I guess. But yeah, so here we go. So we have been appointed the manager of Gateshead football club on a one-year deal worth a grand a week which seems a bit high we replaced the previous manager Mike Williamson who's a player manager if you look along here we've got to strive to make progress on and off the pitch work within the wage budget fight bravely against relegation which we are certainly doing in real life we're doing a lot better than that next year they want a top off finish the year after they want the playoffs and then the year after they want a the years after they want to continue reach the playoffs so I guess we're just a playoff side now cool I'll accept it, but I will say, um, tomorrow when the full release comes out, I will be starting like a new little save. So we won't be doing anything on this save, but we'll be starting you on in case anything has changed from the beta starter database to the full one. Nothing might have changed, or nothing might be the same. But anyways, so, in July of 2018, a year and four months ago, as I drop my phone. Oh, that's a brilliant start. Professionalism. Dr. Ranjan Vorghi has purchased the club from our then owners, Rich and Julie Bennett, with the aid from his associate, Joe Kala, which wasn't really a good thing in the end. The thought was quite good because the club went from professional to semi pro. Turns out it wasn't really all that good in the end. Um, by September, the club was under a transfer embargo, leaving us on it to purchase any players but I feel like through memory I wasn't really aware of that like I didn't become aware of the problems until like December obviously I wasn't exactly going every week but we were performing exceptionally well spot in the playoffs looked on the card but off the pitch oh boy were we in trouble payments were being missed and debts were being accrued they started to build up we end up in debt to a local loan rat. Like, JJ O'Donnell had to stop being the kit person, and he's one of our players if you aren't a Gated fan. Um, it really wasn't good. We got kicked out of the offices at the stadium, had to train at local site Hebbeton Towns facilities, fans had to end up washing the squad's kit. Academy players went months without payment. First team players weren't paid on time, and eventually, Joe Kala, the associate of uh, Ranjan Vorghis, who was pretty much running the club at this point. He ended up being kicked out of a local hotel for not paying, and he started to live out of the club shop. On January 10th, the first sign, the first really big sign hit, and that was the manager, Steve Watson, was quite popular. He left the club to manage York City. Not only did he not receive, like, a, oh, best of luck in your future endeavours thing, he, I'm pretty sure he received no comment like that. But we were flying high in our division, and York were a division below. So that's like someone leaving, I don't know, like, maybe Wolverhampton Wanderers, like leaving Wolves for maybe, like, Ipswich. It, it would be a big shock, and it would really make you go, wow, something's not right there. So that was a huge sign that things were not healthy at the club. Fan favourite, long-serving defender Ben Clark was appointed as a new manager of the club. However, oh, it wasn't very fun for Ben because soon after, the club sold two of his key players behind his back for undisclosed fees. Top scorer Scott Bowden joined Chesterfield on January 30th, despite only joining the summer. And Fraser Kerr departed for Hartlepool United with manager Ben Clark again, only learning of this mere hours before the deal was finalised. The departure of Scott Bowden under a transfer embargo left us with one striker for the remainder of the season. That's not good. 
Cala also tried to sell another fan favourite in Captain Scotty Burrow to a number of clubs in January without his knowledge, much to Barrow's dismay, and he made sure that dismay was known. The club were left with 14 senior players at the end of January, and again only one striker. The thing with Gates is that a lot of the people are very popular, and it's kind of like a family at the club. And so the general manager, Mike Coulson, he'd been there for almost three decades, and even he couldn't take any more, and he left due to the way the club was being run by Varkies and Joe Calla. He said he couldn't take it anymore, he couldn't be there anymore. And there's a lot of articles on things like these, not really interesting to read. Coulson spoke out in an interview upon his departure. He criticised the, form <clears throat> the former chairman, Richard Bennett, because he felt like he didn't put any effort into making sure the club was being put in safe hands. You know, he felt like he just got rid of it. And he advertised the club as debt-free, when it was in fact in over £100,000 worth of debt. Joe Callard made more popular, uh, unpopular decisions. He removed the gate men from the turnstiles, who'd been operating them for over two decades. Only a take on the role himself performed very poorly in it. To be fair to the lads, we were in over a hundred grand of debt, but still, he's, he's a twat. In early March, Dr. Varkies announced that he would sell the club at the end of the season, much to the light of the fans. He announced it would be for a fee of £1, but only if the £200,000 bond that he claimed to pay the Vanarama National League was reimbursed. Because that's what it was all about. It was about stripping the assets, rinsing the club of as much money as you can, getting that bond and running. This announcement came just two days after the club faced a winding up order regarding an unpaid tax pill amounted to just over £20,000. The season went on, the club was still performing their best. We were dropping out of the playoffs, but it looked like a push for them could still be on the cards. Key members of staff, however, whether that be management or players, started being fired and released as the season drew on, with some long-serving members being informed via text message. Like, the club's being treated as if it's just a teenage breakup. It's stupid, man. Like, imagine being fired by text. Like, my first proper job, I was like I was told that my contract wouldn't be extended the day before my last shift. Imagine if they told me that by text, I'd have been foaming. Well, yeah, in April, both the general manager and assistant manager of the club were moved from their positions. Again, text to tell them it's just wrong. Additionally, at the end of April, beloved midfielder J. Drew Donald was sacked. This time, not by text. Yeah, oh, it's by email. Hmm. I mean. That's one step better, I mean, at least I had to open a proper wrap and wait for it to load, rather than send a text. This left the club at the end of April with three employees. All players finished the season out of contract except Scott Barrow, whose contract was set to expire at the end of June, which it did. Manager Ben Clark and press officer Dominic Skur soon departed at the beginning of May, which left the club with absolutely nobody. Oh, isn't that fun? The fans came together with the supporters group Gates at FC Seoul, growing in size and voice as the season drew further on and drew to a close, with the fans unsurprisingly and understandably livid at the situation they were in. Because I knew I was quite annoyed. The group contributed by helping to cover the financial aspects of away matches at times and providing pre-match meals for the squad. Eventually the group took it upon themselves to set up a GoFundMe campaign to raise sufficient funds to purchase the club from the owners. This received large support from the fan bases of Leighton Orient and Aldershot Town. Both clubs have they have suffered through tumultuous times, to say the least. The GoFundMe was mocked by Varghese and Kala, who both each donated £5, pretty much laughing at the face of the fans. Really not the nicest guys. This really doesn't put them across in a positive light, does it? So if you're watching this, which is obviously on, Guess cheers for the tenor lads. Would have helped the GoFundMe that little bit more. The club soon appeared to be sold to businessman and Gates at FC fan Neil Pinkerton. Although this fell through as Varghese failed to sign the required documents. Did he fail or did he refuse? Well, probably a little bit of the latter. Neil Pinkerton and Trevor Clark contributed funds themselves. And that along with campaigns from the fans enabled the fans to finally rid the club. The Varghese and Kala, those odorous smells were gone. Although the club, it wasn't over there. The battle wasn't done. 
because we found ourselves being demoted to the Vanarama National League North due to the actions of Keller and Farkies. And it's sad because a club that pushed for the playoffs, a club that finished ninth out of like 24 teams, were relegated. It's insane. Imagine if this happened in the Premier League. There'd be uproar. The new ownership brought back the former general manager early into their tenure. They appointed centre-back Mike Williamson, former Newcastle player, as player manager. As unpopular staff member, Dave Dixon left via mutual consent. Yeah, Twitter was quite pleased about that one that day. JJ O'Donnell soon returned to the club and the fans were happy about that, putting pen to paper on a one-year contract as both player and club kit manager. And in July, the club retained the services of popular defender Scotty Barrow, appointing him as club captain, much to the fans' delight. And who remembers that signing video of him on the Metro? Scott Barrow's back, boys. As of writing, in November, this was written on November 13th, 2019, I wrote this in bed five days ago, the Heat are currently ninth in the Van Rama National League North, with six wins, five draws, and only three defeats in their 14 league games, with the club having 20 first team players. As a result, things are looking up for Gates and fans, and they are a lot happier than they were last season. The future is looking a lot brighter than at the beginning of 2019. But one question is to be answered. Can we do it better? I think maybe we can, but also maybe we can't, because Mike Williamson's done a good job, but unfortunately Mike Williamson will not be in the save because I'm the manager. And that's not me saying I sacked off Mike Williamson, because I love Mike Williamson. It's just a case of when you get appointed as manager, the club's player manager leaves. And I did actually say, would I be able to bring him back? No. So if Mike Williamson doesn't get signed to a team, I promise you that Iron Mike will return. He'll be hitting roulettes and burger spins from the halfway line. Oh, he'll be back and it will be magnificent. But now, there's one last thing to do in this video. I'm going to give you guys a tour of the club. So, if we look at the finances, we have a lot more than I expected with £374,674. Also, if you do like the look of this skin, because I'm not a huge fan of the very purple look, if I can remember, which I should do, the link to the skin I'm using will be in the description below. It's very good from a good guy. TCS skin, it's brilliant. I absolutely love it. Our transfer revenue is, or our percentage of the transfer revenue that we keep, is made 30%. And that's made available until £2 million revenue has been generated. After that, it drops to 10%. I've never seen that before. So that's quite interesting, but also what surprises me is that if we make that much revenue, why is it going to go down? Like, come on, can we keep the money, please? Um, we're going to have a look at debts and loans. So we're in no debt now, apparently. Um, sponsors, we've not got loads, but we've got a good amounts. We did struggle for sponsors. I think it was last season, not this season. Yeah, because we've got kids central this season. Yeah, it took us a while last season to find a sponsor. So the club vision, work within the wage budget. That's what we'll be doing this season. That's the main thing. That's required. That's something I can absolutely adhere to. We have £1,200 spare in the wage budget. The Vanarama North fight bravely against relegation. We can do that easily. I know we're capable of that. The FA Cup reached the fourth qualifying round minimum. We can try and do that. And the FA Trophy reached the first round minimum. That's not as important as the other two. So we really need to try in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. I'll be honest, lads, I'm looking for a solid, like, mid-table finish this season because I'm not sure how good our team will play in matches, but we're better than fighting against relegation. I know that we are. Next season, we're wanting a Vanarama North top-half finish. Sees after the playoffs. Look, if we're still in this division in 2022-23 and 2023-24 seasons, then I'll be flying through the seasons very quickly because I do not make, want to make you guys watch five seasons of me playing Vanarama National League North football because where's the story in that? The story is just that there is absolutely zero progress at all. Club Info. So, again, there's me. Oh, I forgot what it's like to manage in a league like this with player faces. Oh, look at Scott Barrow. But yeah, so... 
We're predicted to finish 15th. Obviously, that'll change as the season draws on because obviously transfers will be made during this window. I'm not saying we'll buy players, but we'll get some. Blythe are our fierce rivals. I wouldn't say fierce, but okay, fair enough. Train facilities and youth facilities are adequate. Two stars when you're the sixth division of football. I don't think that's too bad. If we look throughout the division, yeah, we're doing good for that. So if we go back up here, owners love the club, of course they do. We've got Gates at Centre was our home sponsor, Rooney's as they wait. I think that's the skip hire place, if it is, my dad used to work for them. Fun fact, other rivals, York local. York's not local to us, we don't really care about York. York's not local. I don't care about York. Like, York's like 120 miles away or something. Not that far, actually, that's more Sheffield. Darlington. Oh, our local rivals as a Hartley Pool that makes more sense. We'll not be facing Hartley Pool this season. We'll be facing Daunt and York and Blythe though, so wish us luck. Irish ticket price, yeah, that's fair. Season ticket price 325. I don't think it's that much. 200 season ticket holders. One thing I'm looking forward to seeing is the attendance for our matches because we have jumped up for attendance this season. Around a grand a game, I'm pretty sure. So if we're getting that much attendance, that would be brilliant for us. No favour personnel as of yet, I'll be in there soon enough. Lee Novak's an icon, he now plays Scunthorpe. We've got Jeff Wright and JJ O'Donnell, Scott Barrow in there, Jamie Chandler, I remember him, I think. Yeah, he's off at Spennymoor now, a low cliff side. They can't be too many divisions below us now. They're in our division now. Bloody hell, fair play to them. Um, Gary Mills, former manager, Ian Bogie, former manager, Chris Gay, former Newcastle player, and Bartlett, goalkeeper. And Derek Bell, who I've got no awareness of who he is. Graham Wood, the former chairman. He owned the club before the Bennetts did. I'm pretty sure he was in charge when we got promoted to the Vanarama National League. Paul Thompson, not got a clue. Ben Clark and Phil Turnbull, former players. James Curtis, former defender. It's Ben Clark, two legendary players. I think it's James Curtis that's played the most games for Gator of anyone in history. One piece of bad news, though. So, we were affiliated to Newcastle. I was not aware of that bit. Now, essentially, right, we had an affiliacy with Newcastle United. That affiliacy was gone. Because I played a little bit with Newcastle in the beta. And, yeah, that affiliacy was gone. And I was like, oh, that's going to be hard. But now I've just seen that we're affiliated with Sunderland. So that, that makes this easier. Because we can get some players on loan that are good youngsters. Which will really help. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to buy players for a while. I don't want to buy players until I know that our finances are steadied, that the ship is steadied, that it's stable. So Sunland could have some good loan players for us to look to bring in to help fill up the club. And it'll help with the wage budget because we've not got a lot of space to manoeuvre to bring in new players. And if you look, we've not got the most squad depth in the world. And we've just lost our star centre half, which is a real shame because I flipping love Mike Williamson. But yeah, if you look at the side, we've got some players who've been around here a while. Scott Barrow is our key man. He's a great left back. I don't want that there. I want that there. There we go. I prefer that now. But yeah, so Scott Barrow, if you look, he's our best player. He's a good player for most Van Rommel and sides. The fans really like this player. We... Bloody hell, Ian Watson. You're not very good at this judging people, are you? Matty Patterson, former Gator neutral player. But yeah, so Scott Barrow is a good player for most Vanarama national sites. That says a lot that we've got that person still here in this league. He'll be a rock at the back. He'll really help us out. We've got JJ O'Donnell, two and a half stars. Leading player for most regional Premier Division sites. I feel like that's very harsh. Again, a very popular player. He hasn't played too much for Gateshead. But he played a fair bit last season. But he did undergo a really bad injury a few years ago that would have killed off his career if it wasn't for former Sunderland striker Danny Graham. We've got Liam Agnew on loan from Harrogate. He looks a bit okay, actually. Um, is he the best in our mid? Of course not. Oh, Greg Ollie. I forgot about Greg Ollie. He's been here for a year now. He, again, a good player for most. Van Rommel, and I say he's a leading player now. He'll be very good. He can bang in those free kicks, guys. 18 free kick taken. We could see some very good goals in this save. I'm very much looking forward to him there. Jordan Preston. I 
I believe he's back at the club. Yeah, I, I distinctly remember him being here before. John Preston returns to the side. Good player for most Vanarama North side. He could be a very good striker, but I don't really want him being our first team striker because he's got nine finishing. I would like a bit more than nine finishing. But yeah, I'm absolutely really happy about this. Elliot Forbes is still here, the young lad. Genuinely, I'm I'm just really looking forward to this. I can't stress that enough. We're going to have to look to get a new centre-back, maybe. We need a right-back, that's for sure. Maybe a little depth in the middle, because it's a long season, you know. If you look at the league table, 22 sides, that's 42 games in the league. If we have a little FA Cup run, a little FA Trophy run, we could get some prize money through that. It's going to be a long season, but I'm really looking forward to it. If you look at the schedule, we start the season at home to Brackley. And then we've got Farsley. We don't have any derbies for a little while. We've got Dalton down there on the 12th of October. When do York come about? So Blythe's the 2nd of November. My dad's birthday. York's the 7th of December. I don't know why I told any of you my dad's birthday. As if someone's going to be watching this going, Oh, oh I missed his dad's birthday. It was two weeks ago. Oh, I'll have to get in the card. Oh, like as if anyone's going to care. <laughs> But yeah, I think once the save properly starts tomorrow when the full game's released, I'll have a quick look around at things. I'll have a look into maybe getting a new scout at the club. We might have to get some new coaches. But yeah, I think we'll look around at Sunderland to try and get some players on loan there. Leave a comment if you're looking forward to the series. I'm really looking forward to it. I absolutely can't wait for the full game to drop, guys. So thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all very shortly tomorrow for the proper first episode of the Gateset series. And again, quickly, I'll not be playing this until tomorrow, so if I have missed out anything that you want to see, which I probably have because there's a lot to go over, if I've missed out anything, then do please let me know. That's the coaching team. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys very shortly.